Okay, in this video we want to look at the concept of centripetal acceleration. So when we talk about centripetal acceleration, um, we have to first ask the question, is an object that's moving in UCM, uniform circular motion, accelerating? So we've talked about uniform circular motion as constant angular speed, constant angular velocity, right? The rotate, rate of rotation is constant. Uh, it's therefore the linear speed at any point in time, v1 or v2, would be the same. So the magnitude of the velocity is the same. But is it accelerating? And to answer that question, we need to say, well, not only does the magnitude of v change, but does the direction of v change? Because if you remember with a vector, we have to have magnitude and direction for it to be constant. So while I go around the circle, my speed doesn't change. The direction that the velocity is pointing does change. And therefore, because the direction changes, we say, yes, it is accelerating. And we call that acceleration A sub C, uh, or centripetal acceleration. Acceleration uh, towards the center. Now, why is AC towards the center? Now, here we have to do a little deriving. If you want to pause the video and you know, draw the picture out of this circle of your two radii, your delta theta here, your v1, your v2, and we're going to juxtapose that against uh, drawing the vector relationship between v1 and v2. So why don't you pause for a sec and kind of copy down what's on there, and then I'll, I'll take a minute to explain it. Okay, so how do we find the relationship for AC? If, if we look at something in UCM. Now this happens to be rotating clockwise, but it doesn't matter. It could be counterclockwise, clockwise. But if we look at how the position changes from uh, time one to time two over this delta theta, we know that the arc length traveled from here to here is equal to the radius, which doesn't change, time delta theta. So that comes from um, the geometry of a circle. So one thing we were able to derive from the previous uh, example in the previous video was that that angular speed which is delta s over delta t is equal to r delta theta over delta t. So this is, remember that's omega, right? <clears throat> because r delta theta is equal to delta s. So we get this relationship. Now I'm going to rewrite this in terms of delta t. So I do a little algebra maneuvering here and I get an expression for delta t in terms of r delta theta and that angular speed. So this is the first equation we need. So jot that down if you haven't already. Now, if we look at how v1 changes to v2. Well, v1, I'm going to draw, it's a vector pointing in this direction with a magnitude which we call v. Right, v is the magnitude, and v2 has the same magnitude v, but it's now it's pointing in a different direction because it's rotated. So if we line up v1 and v2 and find the difference between the two, delta v, which is v2 minus v1, or v2 plus negative v1, as you've learned in adding vectors together, uh, the way that this is drawn from the picture I got is a different way of lining it up where you line them up at the tails and then the, the change is from one to the other. The way we taught you was line up a V2 and then plus minus V1, so V1 in the minus direction, and we get this downward pointing uh, vector delta V, right? So this delta V and this delta V is the same. So an expression for delta V, so this works for very small changes in angle, for very small delta theta. As delta theta, the limit, as this goes to zero. This change delta v is the same length as this arc length delta s. So we can make uh, an analogy that delta s is equal to r theta, therefore delta v is equal to v, which is the magnitude, the length of the vector, times delta theta uh, at very, very small angles. So if we take this to be true, that the change in v is equal to uh, v, the magnitude, times the change in the angle. And then we go to our basic standard relationship for what is acceleration. Acceleration in general is the change in velocity 
over a certain amount of time. Well, what I'm going to do is some substitution tricks. I'm going to substitute in for change in velocity the magnitude v of the basically the um, linear speed of the motion in an object times the change in angle delta theta. And for delta t, I'm going to pull in this relationship derived from uh, knowing what angular speed is and knowing that uh, the arc length delta s is equal to r times delta theta. So if I do that, I get that ac equals v delta theta divided by r times delta theta divided by v. Well, there's some simplifying I can do. Delta theta is cancel, and 1 over v puts the v up here as a v squared. So I get that the centripetal acceleration of an object moving in uniform circular motion is v squared over r. So the linear speed squared divided by the radius that it uh, carves out uh, while it moves in its circular path. So what is the direction of AC? Well, if we see, uh, no matter what two points in time I look at, my delta V is, in this case, pointing straight down. So from here to here, straight down means towards the center of the circle. So AC always points towards the center of the circle. Okay. Now, as we move forward in this unit, we're going to get into, well, if it's accelerating, in order to have an acceleration, I must also have some kind of force or net force uh, that's causing that acceleration, and that'll be the focus of the next section.